Hi everyone, welcome to Code Comcast YouTube channel. I hope everybody are doing good. In the last session, uh, we have seen like you know, uh, we have discussed about uh, machine learning operations, uh, CI/CD pipeline architecture, and we have discussed everything in a theoretical. So today we are going to discuss about like you know, the entire theoretical into a practical, which means we are going to run a complete CI/CD pipeline for machine learning operations. So yes, you're guessing correct. Whatever manual step that we have performed in the last videos, we have automated. I mean, I have automated everything by applying a CACD tools with the different other tools. And it was a complete Kubernetes deployment with a containerization. So stay tuned till this video, you will get uh, full information and idea about how a simple, a very simple machine learning model can be deployed into Kubernetes. So quick heads up guys, in this video, I'm not going into any uh, super advanced uh, concept integration or something. Even uh, if I say straightforward, this video is very simple way of deploying your machine learning model. Even it is not following the standards of productionization. And you can ask me a question, hey, why it is not following? Because since we are going with the ML ops series, I don't want to make at the beginning more complicated to understand ML ops. I just want to make you understand in a easy way without following the best practices. Later we can practice, we can integrate a number of best practices in the CI CD of our ML ops. So that's the reason. And that's the reason I mentioned quick heads up. It is not like a productionized deployment. Yes, it is, which is following few best practices, but which is not following few best practices. So that's a quick uh, heads up. And let's see like, you know, what all tools are required to, you know, to complete this entire CSCD pipeline. And if you would like to follow me or if you'd like to uh, follow this CSCD pipeline, if you'd like to replicate the same CSCD pipeline in your, uh, in your environment. So the tool set are, you should have a source code. For that, I'll provide the, uh, you know, the same GitLab uh, repository URL in a description of this video. You can go through that and you can clone the entire source code from there. But yeah, so currently in this video, I have exposed a few uh, sensitive data where I can um, use it from the GitLab CACD variable more sensitively. But yeah, again, it's going to be more complicated. I mean, few of the person are coming from the, uh, you know, non-technical or if you're the person are from very basics of understanding DevOps, they would like to learn the ML ops or somebody who just willing to learn machine learning operations as a first time. That's why I did not make more complicated securing way of accessing the secrets, which such as username and passwords. I have exposed few information in this video. That's true. I will, re again, I will uh, reconcile it once I done this video. So the first requirement, you should have a source code. So in the last video, we have seen the same source code. We are going to use the same source code. And as I mentioned, I'll give the GitLab URL, you can clone it. And second thing, you should have a GitLab. So you can, you should have a GitLab, uh, you know, uh, GitLab URL, uh, sorry, GitLab access for you. And you should create an account on GitLab. And you can use the GitLab for storing your source code, which is called as a source code management. So whatever, uh, Whatever code we have written in our local, we have uh, we have pushed the same source code into the uh, GitLab. And second thing, we should require a CI tool. So it can be anything. So in the in in this video, I am using GitLab itself as a CI tool, which is continuous integration. And to run all our workflows, all our stages or jobs, we required a runner. So for that, I have taken a AWS EC2 as a runner. So. Uh, I'll show you how the configuration is uh, uh, can be done. It is very easy way. And uh, next thing, you should need a tool called as a Docker, which you can use for containerization. And um, next is Docker Hub. So Docker Hub is something that uh, is an image registry. It's similar, like you know, you know, it's similar like a GitLab or GitHub, any uh, image registry. Uh, sorry, any source code. So in the source code, you are going to store your source. Uh, you are going to store your code in the image registry. What you're going to do, you're going to store your all Docker images or any other container runtime. And the next tool, Kubernetes. So it, uh, it, since it's orchestration tool, so we are going to deploy your container into the pod. And the next is Argo CD, which is continuous delivery. And the Postman, like, you know, we are going to send the data via Postman uh, by calling the IP address. 
So that's all about the tool that you are required and leave about this command for time being. I will explain you why we required it. So let's not waste our time like you know, let's go to the uh, you know, source code that we have uh, kept into our uh, GitLab. So this is the GitLab repository and you know here I have kept the same source code that we have seen in my local. So here this is my local repo local uh, of Visual Studio code. So I push the same source code into the GitLab with the repository name is ML, uh, ML of Flask. So here uh, we have all our uh, machine learning um, source code which is collection, processing, EDA, feature engineering and evalu uh, uh, evaluation in the model training and you know prediction and visualization everything. So along with that we have the docker file also and uh, along with that we have the docker file and along with that uh, if you come uh, one step back we have the kubernetes files which are required to do a deployment into your kubernetes uh, you know cluster which is a google kubernetes engine in our case. So these are all the uh, source code along with the source code you should have uh, another thing which is a dot gitlab hyphen ca dot yaml file. So this yaml file is necessary to you know to m communicate with the gitlab to make your workflows uh, more structured way. So as I mentioned gitlab can be used as a CI CD tool. So in our case we are using the CI so you need to write all our gitlab ca dot um, yaml file and you need to specify what all stages and jobs and variables what not. So these all the so without these all the requirements that required to build your entire CI CD. Before that let me go to the architectural diagram that I have brought. So if I zoom in a little bit if you see this one like you know here we are like you know we have the we are at the GitLab so in a GitLab we have the source code GitLab CA.YAML file and we have the Docker file we have seen and we have the Kubernetes manifest file such as um, you know this one uh, deployment file and service file. So in a GitLab.CA.YAML file what we are going to do we are going to specify stages. So whatever files we have into our flask underscore ml dot app data collection data preprocessing EDA featuring we are going to call each file and we are going to perform all the actions whatever we perform as a manually we are going to perform all the actions in a CI which is continuous integration we are going to call each stage we are going to look into that and we are going to see what all perform what all operations is going to do behalf of you. So for that, like you know, we need to we need to we need to tell GitLab CA.YAML file, hey, is GitLab CA.YAML file, uh, GitLab GitLab, I need these many stages, and these many stages has to be run like this, and these all my source code are resides, and these all virtual environment you should use. But since we have the GitLab uh, UI, which is uh, open source currently, and it, it is uh, enterprise also, but we require a runner to run all your task. For that only, uh, for that only, what I brought, like you know, I have uh, taken one. Uh, EC3 instance in a AWS. So currently it is here. If I go here, uh, I have taken an EC3 instance. So uh, what I have configured, I just went into uh, web console and I've configured my GitLab runner. I have registered my GitLab runner. I'll give the very simple um, you know commands where you can use it for uh, registering your runner. So here I'm using a shell executor and um, that's all about GitLab runner. So when it comes to like you know here I have uh, written uh, GitLab uh, stages. The first one is uh, if I come here. So the first one is a setup and it's going to set up all my uh, dependencies, uh, data collection, data preprocessing, EDA, feature engineering, model training, evaluation, prediction, Docker build and Docker push. So all the stages that I'm going to perform on GitLab like this, like first one is the data collection and second was the data preprocessing, EDA, feature engineering, model training and model evaluation and model predict and Docker build and Docker push. So these all stages are running on my GitLab on my AWS runner. So I hope it is clear for everybody that you know we, we have discussed like you know I'm not going to make more complicated. I, we just have a source code along with the source code we have a docker file along with the docker file we have the Kubernetes manifest file. So that's all and we are going to recall each file as a stage and we are going to perform into the GitLab CI. That's all. So if I go to the gitlab.ca.yaml file so here we have the stages we have discussed. So these are the variable guys like you know these are all the global variables like you know you can specify it as a local variables also. Since like you know I have specified few variables are required to be called in each uh, stage that's why I made, made as a global variable. The first one is docker image. So this is my docker image and docker tag whatever docker tag I would like to you I can give my pipeline id and registry. This is my docker registry name and this is my registry password and uh, for information I will uh, you know reconcile this password for time being I just exposed as in this video. 
and this is my uh, CA register, which is docker.io. And this is a pseudo password that I have used to perform all the actions. And as I mentioned, first step is um, step, you know setting up the virtual environment and installing dependencies. So I'm calling as a, a setup, and the stage is a setup, and I'm sp performing a shell executors. So I'm specifying the I'm just creating the Python uh, three virtual environment. I'm activating it, and I'm updating my all the pip with a uh, uh, Python enhancement uh, with a py, uh, pip as a um, pip as a tool to uh, install all the dependencies or upgrading it to my uh, runner. And after that, I'm going to call pip install iPhone on our flask of requirement at txt. So this path is available at the uh, this place. So I have a requirement at txt file, which resides into my flask underscore ml underscore app. So I'm going to call this uh, specific requirement requirement at txt because I would like to execute this uh, file and all dependencies will be installed on my runner. And later I can perform all the actions as a next uh, stages. So catching, I'm going to catching all into my virtual environment and artifact path, like I'm specifying any, if any artifact has generated, it has to store on this virtual environment. And this is a tag. Tag here, which means like, you know, as I mentioned, I have been using a AWS EC2 uh, as a runner, AWS runner. So that's why I name it as a MLOps. If you see this one, I name it as MLOps. So this MLOps runner, I have configured into my GitLab runner section. If I go to GitLab runner, if I go to CICD, and if I go here as a runner session, you can see this one, I have a MLOps as a runner. So if you want to configure any new runner, just go to new projects, and uh, just type any name as uh, I can say that uh, MLOps AWS, just create a runner. It itself, itself it will give a command where you can use this command to communicate between your GitLab uh, UI and your runner. Just take this uh, command and execute on your Linux machine or any other machine. So in my, in my case, I'm executing a Linux machine. And if it execute on Windows, so uh, what it will, it will give another command. So this is the command it will get. And if you want to enable on a Docker container or Kubernetes executor, you can do that. So since I'm executing Linux, so I have uh, taken a AWS EC2 machine. So that's why I can copy this command. I can directly go into my EC2 machines here and I can just paste that uh, particular command over here and it will run the particular command and I can make a connection between uh, my GitLab and, and my uh, runner. So if you want to see the connection, whether it is successfully or not, so where you can, you can come step one step back and it will show you the state the health of your particular runner. If I come back. Since my runner is active, so if you see this one, now it is in a green stage. So it's saying the runner is on online. If say anything happened, uh, maybe uh, your runner has uh, terminated or stopped, so it will be on uh, red color. So which means like runner is offline and you cannot perform any actions. So why am I explaining this runner? Because like, you know, if you see this to the file, we have configured as a tag. Tag in something saying that you're going to call or you're going to specify, hey, I would like to run this particular stage, but where would like to run? I would like to run this stage on specific runner, which is called as a MLOps. So what GitLab will, will do, it will go and execute this entire script on my particular MLOps runner. That's the beauty of tags. You can integrate any other runners also, like you know, if you have any independent jobs to be run and are there any dependable uh, runners are there, so you can execute, it's up to you. In my case, I have only single runner. I have been executing all the stages in this particular runner. The next one, data collections. So here I'm just, a, and, uh, you know, enabling same the, um, virtual environment I'm upgrading my pip and i'm just calling the python flask uh, underscore dot data collection dot py if i go back into my uh, into my directory so i'm going to call this file which is available on flask ml up underscore sorry power slash data collection and i'm going to call the particular file and i'm going to specify because once you collect it you are going to store the data into csv right so that's why you know it i uh, specify the artifact path as a data csv and dependencies like you know this job first it depend on the setup until unless setup has succeeded it won't run the next uh, data collection job that's the beauty of dependencies and same here i'm going to use the tags as mlops and again you ask the question hey why do you do again you know uh, using the source and all because of i would like to activate the same virtual environment that i've created that's why i'm upgrading every each and every time and i have few issues also in my runner that I will resolve into the upcoming sessions. So for time being, just follow this one because like, you know, I was tried like, you know, uh, there are a few issues on Linux machine where uh, versions are mismatched. That's why every time I would like to run a specific job, I have enabled it. 
and data pre-processing like in whatever data we have collected we are going to pre-process it same way you know we have it has a dependency like uh, data collection so until the data collection uh, stage has completed it won't triggered and you know whatever uh, data pre-processing is there so it is going to store the excel sheet into the un process underscore data dot clc and eda it is the same it is going to take the same dependencies from here and it is going to call the ml tags and just it is calling the requirement at txt along with that and you know it is going to call the uh, particular python file which is available at flask underscore ml app similar to the all the stages guys feature engineering and uh, model training and you know, model evaluation all this but when it comes to docker build so i'm, I'm going to specify the service as a docker build here i'm going to specify the script because like you know uh, there are a few uh, user mismatches has happened into my runner so since while creating the entire of uh, the CICD pipeline there were a few uh, corruptions was happened that's why for safer side you know first I'm echoing my sudo password and later I'm building with a sudo docker build hyphen t and this is my entire uh, you know uh, command I have executed and where my docker uh, you know files are resides at this specific part and later I'm going to tag it uh, along with the latest tag and this is my repository name and I'm going to use the same docker, same uh, runner for this job also. And the next Docker push. So in the Docker push, like you know, whatever Docker image have uh, you know built on my runner, I'm going to push the same image into the repository called as a Shake MLOps2. And I'm uh, whatever uh, tags I've used here, I'm going to push the same image. Before that, I'm going to log in via uh, CLI itself. Like you know, first I log in into the particular registry, and later I will use this command to push into the particular source code so while i'm updating uh, while i'm uploading this uh, making this entire registry as a public so i'll remove all the sensitive data and i just i don't want to mismatch to anybody so i don't want to you know take advantage of my credentials and I'll, i'm requesting you to utilize you all your credentials and replace with my i, I specify it like you know your credential or your username i'll specify it you know and you can replace it your uh, your actual uh, username and password so these are all about like you know gitlab c.yml file that i have used to perform my ci cd so if i go to the cicd section i can show you like you know what all each job has done if i go to pipelines oh, okay so for information guys like you know to achieve this particular one say uh, you know successful pipeline i don't know how many pipelines i have run uh maybe i don't know 20 or 30 pipelines I have run because there are a lot of issues occur while you're running machine learning operations pipeline because like you know uh, it, it has a dependencies issue it has a renders issue and even it has hundreds of issues while you building the docker image and you know hundreds of issues will come so I request everybody to carefully run your machine learning operations pipeline and without uh, wasting your time so let's go to the pipeline which I have run six hours ago uh, today itself so I'm going to show you the first one is set up. So what it is happening, it is going to call my runner. Uh, if I go up, so I'm going to execute as a shell. And if you see this one, it's going to call the MLOps runner. And this is system ID and all. And uh, next one, if you see this one, it is first, it is going to create the virtual environment and activating it and requirement satisfied because I have run multiple times. That's why it has been uh, requirement had is satisfied. And even if you see this one, all the requirement was satisfied because like, you know, in, a, in my case, I have ran same requirement at txt multiple times for uh, fixing the issues that's why it is showing requirement at txt has been you know succeeded and this job has succeeded by just installing all the dependencies this is the first you know setting up a job if i go to second job like data collections sorry stage data collection so here what is happening like you know, i'm going to collect all the data if you see this one python 3 flask ml uh, data collection.py so it has collected all the data and this data is available at this particular place if i go to browse and data.csv and if i see if i see this guys, so all the data is available like 22 15000 purchased or not so these all information i have stored into this particular path so that's about the uh, data collection and if i go back okay let me go as is well. so next data preprocessing in that like you know i have, I have uh, integrated the same script over here and it you know what it is going to specify it is killing all the data and dropping all the null values and all and it will give the file where i have stored in this path so if you see this one this is the csv file that i have stored over here the similar way like you know it is going to perform all the uh, stages and uh, data collections and we have the eda 
So it has, uh, you know, because like you, know, you may not see the uh, actual matrix which is in a CLI, but if you want to come down, if you, you can see this one, guys, like, you know, it has successfully executed and, you know, it has all the captured the data and everything it has been stored. And uh, so it has performed all the actions which we require to do the exploratory data analysis. But yeah, we are not making more dynamic, but for simple, say for say, like, you know, we have used it. But when it comes to feature engineering, if you see this one, guys, like, you know, uh, you know, here we have been uh, collecting all the metrics and all. And if I go to browse the file, like we can see what all features are available in this uh, CSE file. So all this age and salaries and purchase are not like, you know, these many features we have collected over here. And the next model training. So here we are going to uh, train the model uh, for that. Like, you know, if you see this one, like, you know, we have all the successful metrics are available and we have trained the model with these particular artifact which we have generated, like, you know, intercept.np1 and the model.npy. So these are all the artifact that we have generated over this one. So as we know, like, you know, we have been using linear regression for this, like, you know, for this entire model. And the later, like, you know, model evaluation, like, you know, this is just we are going to test and train the data with the actual and the test data. So we are going to predict it and, you know, we are going to get a simple basic matrix over here. And if you see this one, like, you know, later that we are going to create the uh, Docker image out of a Docker file, which called as Docker build. So if you come up, like, you know, we have been uh, calling a sudo password, which is root. And now uh, we are passing the command sudo docker build. And later that it is, there are a few warnings, so you can ignore it. So it is going to create uh, entire Docker image out of it. So it's going to copy it, all the requirement at txt and it will run it. And, you know, uh, it exposed and take all the environment and CMDs and all. So this is the Docker basic Docker build. And later, like, you know, we have the Docker push. So as I mentioned, whatever Docker image was built and we have to push it to the image registry. In our case, we have, um, you know, uh, docker.io or we can call it as Docker Hub. So first it is going to log in with a username and password. So login has succeeded and later it has pushed the same Docker image into the particular image registry with the latest attack. So that is about the entire CA, guys. Like, you know, I hope it is clear for everybody. So like, you know, whatever manual step that we have performed in the uh, last video, so we have automated everything with the uh, GitLab, GitLab workflows. And now the time to understand the CD. So we have discussed about entire CA. When it comes to CD, like, you know, uh, we have seen already the architectural diagram, like, you know, we have taken a Google Kubernetes engine cluster, uh, GKE cluster. So in, on top of GKE, uh, I have installed Argo CD, very basic uh, commands you can use to install Argo CD. I'll, ex I'll, I'll explain you how, uh, I'll add those commands into the uh, this um, video description, you can go to that. And uh, so we have let the Argo CD know that it has to, you know, always watches the, uh, or image uh, or GitLab. So where we have specified the Kubernetes manifest file. And I'll show you how we can specify it. I'll explain you in the YAML syntax. So you know, to tell the Argo CD, hey, Argo CD, uh, this is my repository, which is GitLab. And this is available uh, over there. And this is my uh, path where you need to look uh, actively for, you know, uh, your Helm charts or Kubernetes manifest file. So you need to let Argo CD know where you are all manifest file. So what Argo CD will do, it will always watch us your image, uh, your uh, source code management with a specific path and it will go and pull, is there any new changes are occurred? And since uh, you have uh, uh, you have integrated this Docker uh, image into your manifest file, so what it will do, it will go and pull the specific image from your image registry. So let's go to the particular path and understand how we have done this entire integration. In a Kubernetes, like, you know, if you go to here, we have a deployment.yml file. So very simple. We have already understood everything like deployment as a kind and name of metadata, how many replicas we need, like, you know, one replica and all. But if you come here, guys, like, you know, here I have specified my image registry name. So this is very crucial. Like, you know, in our case, you can specify your own image registry name. And this is all my CP resources and limits and all. And this is all environment, like, you know, ANVs and production and all. I have specified it. So nothing I have done. But when come one step back and the next one is the services. So in the services, I have exposed the service as a load balancer because I would like to handle that particular, um, you know, uh, endpoint. And I'd like to test the endpoint whether my model is working fine or not. So that's the beauty of load balancer. And I have used it. And if I come back and I, uh, so if I come back into my uh, Visual Studio code, I will, where I can explain you about the, uh, this one, uh, where it is, uh, uh, 
total flask statistics there is one yaml file didn't i save it okay my bad i think i haven't uh, saved it but yeah i'll let you know while i'm uh, explaining into the argo city so fine like you know we have discussed about all those things so uh, as, as, as I shown in the last video, you need to have a Google, uh, Google Kubernetes engine to be installed and uh, you need to have, uh, you can use a, a web console or you can, you can just go to the kubeconfig, you can use your local machine, get communicated to your Google Kubernetes engine, it's up to you. And yeah, so you need to install Argo CD, Argo CD will watch us your uh, uh, source code management specified path and it will take those uh, manifest file and apply it into your machine learning, uh, you know, um, Sorry, your machine learning namespace. So in our case, I'm going to use the same uh, namespace over there as Argo Studio. I install it. So if you come here, like, you know, whenever after done this entire configuration, so when your deployment has succeeded, so whenever a user has requested, he'll get the response, whether the particular user can purchase the product or not. So we will see, like, you know, after exposing this entire CACD pipeline. So I hope it is clear for everybody, like, you know, whatever uh, ma manual step we have done in the last videos, um, like, you know, we have automated everything into the GitLab. And again, I mentioned this is not the productionized uh, pipeline. This is very simple and basic pipeline where you can uh, just play around the machine learning operations, um, you know, uh, pipeline. Uh, you can understand how the jobs and how the things are applied. But yeah, in the upcoming session, we'll see uh, how the productionization can be done. So now I'm going to trigger, a, trigger one fresh pipeline uh, for your references. So I'm going to use a, uh, uh, sorry, pipeline session. I'll come here and I'll go to new pipeline. I'll specify my branch. My branch is a MLOps flask. And uh, if I run pipeline, my new pipeline will be created. If you see this, the new pipeline has created. All these stages will be run over here, guys. So perhaps it will take some time to run it uh, because I'm using very, uh, you know, uh, uh, very less configured runner into uh, AWS. So that's why it will take some time to finish it off. And uh, yeah, so all the pipeline will be run and here it will push the same. So uh, Docker image into image registry. So wait for it. Like, you know, uh, I think it will be quick only. It won't take much time. So now it is setting up. As I said, so it is all requirements all already satisfied, so that's why it is not going to take much time to install it. But in our case, it may take some time to do all the actions. So the job has succeeded. And even if you see there, we have artifacts available over there. So what I will I'll refresh it. So now it is going to the data collection and uh, each step will be performed it's their own job and uh, it will pass to the next stage. Now data collection is happening. So data collection is done. Now it's time to data pre-processing. So data preprocessing is done. Now it's time to EDA. If you see this, like you know, in this data preprocessing, it has done its job, and now artifacts was created here, and you can browse it, and you can see what all artifacts was generated, and this preprocessed data is available over here.
So meanwhile, what I will do, I'll uh, you know walk you through the um, <coughs> Argo CD uh, UI. So for that, I'll go to this Argo CD over here. So this is Argo CD UI, guys. Like you know, it looked like this. So um, you know, if you want to create a new application, so in in my case, I have already created a new application. So as as we discussed about the uh, architectural diagram, so so first you need to log in into this uh, GKE cluster, which is a Google Kubernetes engine. If you come here, can you need to come here. So once you come here, uh, so you need to install Argo CD on top of your you know Kubernetes cluster. So for that, I'll specify you the uh, the steps. So if you go to uh, uh, install Argo CD and Kubernetes, so it has amazing documentation where you can follow it. So uh, make sure, guys, like you know, while installing, you need to expose it as a load balancer. Otherwise, you cannot access this Argo CD UI. So I'll I'll, I'll add those steps uh, into this email. You know video description so how we can expose it into the load balancer since like you know it is using cluster ips internally so very just internally you know communicate uh, between part to part but if you'd like to uh, interact this amazing ui uh, uh, between you and your argo cd so you should have to expose the argo cd deployment as a load balancer otherwise you cannot access it and then you, otherwise you cannot make that deployment into the kubernetes so first you know when you logged in so you when you install it so you need to um, expose the load balance as i said after that it will uh, come the ui so and it will give you uh, like you know username and password to be logged in so the default password is admin but you know once you install it so the sorry the default username is admin but after log uh, you would like to log through the password so the password is not default so for that if i go back so here you need to use this command to get the password from the particular pod so once you run this particular command in my case if i copy this command if i go to my google kubernetes engine so if i paste over here so it will show you the password from here from here guys like you know it's going to get the particular secret if i logged out let me log out from here so now logged out so the username is admin and the password that I have to use this password guys. from till this point this is my entire username that I have used uh, cloud shell but yeah from you this is the password I'm going to copy that so I copied it if we come here if I paste in a password session and sign in so what it will do like you know it will fetch the password from your particular pod and you can log in the particular specified uh, password so let's go and see uh, where are we into the pipelines i think it is still running where it is okay so model training is done model like model build also is done so the docker build also is done if you see this one like you know it has built it and it has successfully tagged it and uh, if i go to this particular uh, docker push so it is pushing the uh, tagged image into image registry if you see this one this is the latest image so what i will do i will go to the image registry that is a uh, hub.docker.com if i come here this is my image registry guys mlops uh, 2 and if i refresh it so the latest image has to be arrived so few seconds it has arrived so this is the latest image uh, latest uh, image so i have tagged it as the latest that's why it has uh, tagged as la latest and this is my operating system that i have used the linux as architecture amd64 so that is how we can use the ci uh, as a gitlab to build your image and post it over here so that's all and if i go back to the particular argo cd so in argo cd if you would like to monitor your Argo CD to and 24 by 7 to your specified uh, Kubernetes manifest file, which are available into your GitLab. So for that, you need to come here. You need to create a new app. And uh, before that, you need to uh, add the project. So you need to create the project, guys. So what happening in the previous version, it is not showing uh, like, you know, project has to be master and should. But in our case, like, you know, you need to add a new project, go to the settings and, you know, come to project. So you can create a new project over here with the project name pipeline and description that's it guys once you create the project in my case i've already created the project mlops as a flask so i can use that project to create my application if you come here new app give the application name like you know uh, mlops or something whatever it may be and the project name that i have used as a mlops hyphen flask it has to be similar that the same project name same policy 
which means like you know whether you would like to sync between your argo cd and your gitlab as automatic and manual because whenever you commit into the specific uh, kubernetes manifest file what argo cd will do it will go and get or it will go and fetch all those manifest file and apply it into the specific kubernetes uh, engine or kubernetes cluster so that's the sync policy guys whether you would like to make it a manual sync or whether you would like to make automation sync so it is going the both policies and sync option whether schema validations or we'd like to make a auto create namespace or a prone latest we have an n number of um, you know available over here and whether it is a foreground or background or uh, um, or for so here source so in a source you need to specify what is a source code you know management tool it can be gitlab or github or any other so you can specify over here whether it is git or you can specify helm charts you can specify it and head is a branches and the path Path is must and should, guys. Like you know, if we go to our uh, source code management, so where we have all the Kubernetes manifest file, our manifest files are available at the MLOps flask. You need to specify, sorry, uh, this Kubernetes path. So if you give the Kubernetes path, it will go and watch 24 by 7 the specific directory. Any new changes were happen in, in this entire file, it will go and take all this file and apply it into the specific uh, namespace into the Kubernetes engine or Kubernetes cluster. So once you create it, this is a cluster URL. Since you are using, uh, you have installed uh, Argo CD on Kubernetes, you don't require it. So you can use the default um, SSS. And where would like to apply it, you know, whether it, which specific namespace or not. You need to specify the specific namespace. That's all and directories and all you can leave for the right now. And this is all information you need to fill uh, once you install the Kubernetes. So I'll show you how my uh, specific, uh, you know, uh, MLOps engine has been uh, available. So if you see this guy, like you know, our pipeline has been ran and uh, still it has been sync. I think it is going to take some time to sync automatically. So for this one, like you know, it has sync 43 minutes ago. Uh, you know, uh, our pipeline has ran few minutes ago, so uh, it has to be ran automatically. Let's refresh it. So it is ran for, oh, okay. So it has run now. You see this one? So uh, we see 43 minutes ago it has run. Now it has taken the latest changes. If you, if you see this one, so it is applying into the particular namespace, uh, particular namespace and it exposes as a service. And this is my pod. So now my pod is running on. And uh, so this is how it is going to apply all your changes. And it's going to show it is going to show the health checks also, guys, whether healthy or not, or synced or not, sync okay or not. So if you see this one, uh, now it is timing 8041, so it has sync with 8040. Usually it won't take much time, guys, but I am using very uh, uh, minimal Kubernetes engine resources, very less resources. That's why uh, since uh, it is working on a congested uh, resources, that's why you know it is going to take some time to sync with the Kubernetes uh, uh, manifest file that are available into your Kubernetes directory. But usually, if you are using um, you know high or computer computers like GPUs and all, it won't take much time. It will be syncing up within fraction of minutes or seconds. So this is how we can you know deploy your application into uh, Kubernetes engine. So seen fine, like you know we can see here, like you know it has deployed in Kubernetes. But if you want to validate it, if you come here, what I will clear it. Kube CTL get pods hyphen n argo cd argo cd is the namespace that i've used to deploy this entire deployment if you see this one so it has been running since 44 minutes because like you know have uh, uh, used the same part uh, while doing some practice but yeah this is how we can apply it into the kubernetes cluster and uh, these all parts are related to argo cd but this part is related to my kubernetes uh, my my machine learning model and in, in this part i have uh, uh, my image has been running on so if you come uh, cube CTL describe pod and the pod name and the namespace is a hyphen in Argo City. If I do describe, we can look into the all information, like, you know, if you see this one successful assigned to the particular namespace and all, and it has pulled from this particular uh, latest image. So this latest image is available into my, you know, this uh, image is guys. So, so we have pushed into five minutes ago. So that's the reason I would like to show you because uh, this log, which is, if I go top, this is showing 44 minutes because since 44 minutes has been running, so it just replaced the same kind of, 
uh, uh, pod with another pod. That's what it's showing on. And create a container, start the content. Now the content is up and running. So fine, like, you know, if you'd like to see any uh, other information like a cube, CTL, get all hyphen n argo cd, it will give all the information which like uh, controllers and services are available into argo cd. So if you see this one, if you come from the top, now it is getting information of ports and later it is giving information of services. If you see this one, we have uh, exposed Argo CD as a load balancer to access it. And we exposed our machine learning model Flask ML app service as a load balancer. So I'll, I'll access this particular URL and I'll show you how our machine learning will be up here. Let's see all our deployments we have. So these all deployments are related to Argo CD. But if you see this one, this deployment is related to our machine learning model, which is one out of five. We have specified one pod has to be run. And these all replica sets, these are replica sets of it, and these are all stateful sets for our controllers of Argo CD, not for our, you know, uh, uh, deployment. So we haven't used any stateful set in your deployment. So that's all about, like, you know, uh, all information about this particular deployment. But yeah, so now we have exposed our uh, service as a load balancer. We have seen into our manifest file. Now we'll go to this particular uh, external uh, IP address, 104.197. So we'll copy it. Oh, it hasn't copied. So I'll copy it and I'll go to this browser and I'll paste this. So once I paste it, I should see the message of welcome. So welcome sale prediction homepage. Fine. So it is working on our Kubernetes engine. And what I will do, I'll perform a few actions and I'll see the same logs into my uh, Kubernetes uh, part. So what I will do, uh, forward slash data underscore collection is our endpoint if i press enter it will collect all the data and the similar way like you know we can perform all the data so but yeah in our real time we don't use it like you know uh, we don't use these all endpoints to get uh, data and all so but just for practicing purpose to get a uh, hands-on and machine learning operations i have used it and the next command we have the data pre-processing so what i will do i'll go to this uh, uh, ml of flask i'll go to flask app and I'll go to app.py where I have all the endpoints, guys. That's why I'm coming here. I'm going to call the data preprocessing. So this is my data preprocessing endpoint. So if I press enter, preprocess data will come. And the next one is EDA. This is my EDA. And the next one is a feature engineering and uh, model training. All the model metrics will be come here. So these all operations were happen on CI CD guys. Sorry, I mean on in our GitLab CI. But we are performing into the real time because we have exposed this endpoint URL and the predict. So predict is something that we have to use the postman. So that's why it is not coming here. So what I will do, I'll take this endpoint and I'll go to the postman. So we have already used this postman for uh, uh, last video, so I'll remove it. I'll paste over here. So in our in our headers, you need to specify the content type as application JSON. In the body, we are passing the age, thirty-five salaries of forty-seven thousand. Once you send it, also it will give the value whether it is predict or not. You can purchase or not. You're saying you can purchase it. So what I'll specify it. I'll give the fifteen as an age, and it will show you whether the person can purchase a product or not based on his age and the salary. He cannot purchase because like his age is lesser. And what I will do, I'll his uh, Ish, I'll change it as a 50 and I'll change the salary as a 3000 rupees. So what is happening if I do that, um, he cannot purchase because his salary is very lesser. So that's why this is how my model is predicting all the uh, prediction, whether the person can purchase or not. Fine. Like, you know, we have performed a number of, you know, operations on this browser. And uh, now we have seen the, we have the, the user input. So here I'm a user. If I go to the uh, architectural diagram, so till this point, we have exposed everything. Now my user, I mean, I'm, I'm the user just considers I'm a user. So I'm a user, I'm testing my prediction. So this is my endpoint. Um, so for understanding, I uh, have here I am. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to request the particular, uh, you know, running pod in the Kubernetes. I've requested with the uh, this uh, age and salary. So what this model has given response. So if the age is 50 and the salary is 3000, this, this person cannot purchase the product. So this is how the model is giving the re uh, request back to the response. And it can be me or it can be another person. 
So for information guys, like, you know, now it is just uh, API. So what in the next section we'll do, we'll take the same, we'll, we will we will use the same CACD pipeline to create us, you know, when UI, which is user interface, we'll use HTML or any other language as for front end, we'll expose same endpoint in a UI. So we can see whether the person can purchase or not. We'll enter those values and we send the data and the, like uh, now uh, we are sending in the enter ap format right so we'll send the data into the ui and we'll see whether the purchase can predict or not a purchase or not so the next section will discuss about that as a you know simple project but fine timing we can use a postman to predict or not okay i think now we have performed a number of you know uh, actions now it is time to see whether my pod has received those money requests or not so for that how we can see so if i go if i go here cube ctl get pods hyphen n Argo CD is my namespace. I enter it. It will give the pods. So what I will do, I will check the logs of this particular pod. Then I can identify whether my pod received those many requests from the user or not. So the command is kubectl logs and the pod name. Uh, okay, so I think I need to specify the uh, namespace. Sorry, hyphen in Argo CD is the namespace. If I specify it, it shows the, all the logs. If you see this one, guys, like, you know, we have a bunch of logs. If you see this one, first is a get. And, uh, you know, we have, uh, we have, if you see this one, data collection is the uh, first endpoint we have used as get. Data preprocessing, feature engineering, everything is a get. But where we have a post method, uh, here is the post method, guys, predict. So predict is a post method. First, it is uh, given a 405 error. And later, you know, we have a successful 200 as a success message over here. So this is how we can verify it, like, you know, how our machine learning model, uh, how we interact with the machine learning model, which is running into our Google, Google Kubernetes engine. So, and uh, this is all guys, like, you know, you can, you can verify it, like, you know, you can look into the, all the logs, you can, uh, you can verify it, how your uh, machine learning model is behaving in a production. So I hope it is clear for everybody, like, you know, uh, entire, entire CACD pipeline and uh, what all tools we have used and, you know, uh, how we have integrated all those things and all. So I hope it is clear for everybody. Like, you know, if you have any uh, questions into this entire architecture diagram or how these pipelines works and um, any other questions are available uh, or with you. So please feel free to drop in this uh, video comment section. For sure, I'll reply back to those videos. And the next video, what we will do, we'll use one UI to communicate between a user, communicate between user to our Kubernetes, uh, you know, uh, Kubernetes engine. So for that, what we will do, we'll, we will take one any HTML or CSS or any Bootstrap or Angular uh, code and we'll deploy into the Kubernetes or in, deploy into anywhere. We'll expose the endpoint in between those two and, you know, we'll see how it will be work in the log. So stay tuned for this uh, playlist so more amazing content will be come into this Code Kamga YouTube channel. So I hope it is clear for everybody. Like, you know, uh, if I miss something, if you, it's not clear for you, if, if the concept is not clear, I request you to drop in the comment section. Until then, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.